There's the question, which I asked last year. What man is most identified with Impressionism and the birth of modern art? And the answer is? Monet. Monet, exactly, very good. Um, one of the world's most prolific artists, over 2,000 works of art. When you think of Monet, what image comes to your mind? I'm sure you all have something in mind, so you don't have to say it. Could be Impression Sunrise, the one that was first exhibited in 1874 at the first of eight Impressionist exhibitions. Perhaps it's one of his seascapes that he painted along the coast of Normandy. Perhaps it's various leisure activities, including the ones that he painted with Renoir uh, at Le Grenier in 1869. Perhaps it's the boats on the water and the leisure activities that he painted in Argentoy, where he lived from 1871 to 1878. Perhaps it's one of his series, The Poplars, the facade of Rouen Cathedral, the grain stacks, which are often called haystacks, but we'll get into that. How about the Houses of Parliament in London? So all these series were his attempts to capture color and light at different times of day and different weather conditions. Ah, perhaps it's the water lilies, perhaps it's the reflections in the pond that he built at Giverny after he moved there in 1883. Well, these pictures of water lilies and ponds, etc., are the subject of an exhibition that begins at the De Young Museum February 16th and lasts through May 27th. This is the sequel to Monet, The Early Years, which was last at the, De, uh, the Legion of Honor. So they have to go to the De Young Museum this year because the pictures are large, super, super sized. There'll be 50 paintings in the exhibit. They cover his later years, from the 1890s until his death in 1926. 20 of them come from the Musée Marmottan Monet in Paris. Their focus will be the garden at Giverny. So you're going to be seeing a lot of easel paintings, some traditional size, some very, very large, featuring his house, his rose garden, his Japanese footbridge, the pond with the ever-changing reflective surfaces and the islands of lily pads. There will be a reconstruction, basically, of a 42-foot uh, mural of Agapanthus that was originally scheduled to be included at the Orangerie in Paris, but it was eliminated. We'll get into that. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get clued in on all these things. Anyway. So the six-week course covers his entire life. So I'm going to begin at the beginning with his mom and dad, and we're going to make our way until the final scene where everybody is pulling his body to this grave site in 1926. So Monet is noted as being very sensitive light and color. These are key to his work as an Impressionist. Later on, we'll see how he does evolve, and his representational themes become more abstract. That's a gradual evolution there. But one of the things that really is going to make a, a difference in his later work are the cataracts that he begins after 1905 to develop. We're going to meet the ophthalmologist, the eye doctors, who had a very challenging patient. Claude Monet eventually had surgery in 1923. So just imagine from 1905 to 1923, he lived with cataracts. We're going to go into all the, de all the medical details. As the cataracts matured, his color palette changed. So he switched from blues and greens to more reds and yellows and browns because his vision changed. So we're going to be seeing that. So then we're going to conclude with the panoramic mural cycle at the Orangerie in Paris, even though we don't have a field trip to go there. It would be nice, but anyway, you can make your own way there anyway. So we're going to look at the Grandes Decorations, which began in 1914 after the uh, advent of World War I and which were concluded shortly before his death in 1926. They were not dedicated until 1927. So we're going to look at this really unique landscape, which, um, again, as Monet says, gives the illusion of an endless hole of a wave with no horizon and no shore. So we're going to be spending six weeks looking at two of his key uh, interests, painting and gardening. So we'll put it all together, and I see I've run out of time. 